It's cataractcoach.com. We're doing a routine cataract surgery here with a torque lens. We have a Mendez gauge on the eye, which we've lined up to our reference marks, the black dots, and we're using a cystotome here to mark the steep axis, which in this case is about 20 degrees. Now, it's very easy when we have the torque lens in the eye to line up the torque lens marks with these marks that we've made on the cornea at the steep axis. And again, the bottom dot on your screen is about the zero degree mark, and the marks we made on the cornea with the cystotome are 20 degrees. I'm going to fill up the eye with viscoelastic, then we'll make our main incision. Important to make the main incision on the steep axis. And the reason is it'll help decrease the astigmatism. And by keeping that incision on the steep axis, it will not shift the degree area. In other words, it'll stay at 20 degrees. If I made the phaco incision at 180 or the zero mark, it may shift the new axis of astigmatism away from 20 degrees, probably more like 15 degrees. So that's an important consideration. We want to change the magnitude of the astigmatism, but not its direction. So we want to keep the steep axis the same by making that incision there. Here comes our capsular axis. We're doing this now, just about done. And we've measured with the forceps to make sure it's a five millimeter capsular axis. We definitely want the capsular axis to overlap the optic edge, especially with a toric lens. And that's because it helps keep the lens in good position and prevents it from rotating. So there's the hydrodissection completed. The nucleus will certainly spin. A little more dispersive viscoelastic to protect the cornea. And now, if you know my technique, we're going to do some phaco chop here. So phaco probe going in the eye in a high vacuum, high flow mode. There's the chopper. Buzz in with the probe. Embed the chopper. And all of a sudden, we have two halves. Now here, we're just going to bring up the first half and get it to the iris plane at which point we can just emulsify it and remove it. Again, a pretty typical cataract for our Los Angeles practice, not too dense. So removing that, and now here comes the second half of the nucleus, bring that up, and we can further chop it like this, and then emulsify the, be the bits and pieces. So this is going beautifully. Important to have the chopper here in that safe position, and the reason is we don't want to inadvertently damage the posterior capsule. If we rupture the posterior capsule, you can't put your torque lens in the eye. So we have to be very careful to protect the posterior capsule. Time for some removal of the lens cortex. There's a little bit of perhaps epinuclear shell as well. And very carefully here, we'll get the IA probe. There it is. And we'll start grabbing this. So again, I move in a circumferential manner. Also important, make sure you're looking at the capsular rex's edge. There's the epinucleus that's now been removed. So for cortex removal, which is this step now, make sure the capsorexus edge is not moving. A moving capsorexus edge is an indication of weak or broken zonules, and that can compromise the positioning of our toric lens. So it all looks good. No issues have been noted. Finishing up with the cortex removal, and then going under the capsorexus edge to polish the undersurface of that anterior capsule. That looks great. And we're just about ready for our lens. So we'll fill the capsular bag with our cohesive viscoelastic. Important to deepen the bag. Fill the bag as well as deepening the anterior chamber. But very important to deepen the bag. That gives us plenty of room to place our toric lens. So here comes the lens, loaded by my technician. And we'll deliver that in the capsular bag. This is a single piece, monofocal acrylic lens. It's also aspheric, and it also has this uh, tinting to it to give a more normal color perception. I like to rotate the lens, and we're putting it a clock hour or so before um, we need to have it. In other words, it's placed a, cl a clock hour or two before our ideal marks. And that's because the lens is very easy to rotate clockwise. It's very difficult to rotate counterclockwise. So removing all the viscoelastic, that looks good. And so we need to line this lens up. So we'll go in here. The eye probes on position one just to provide inflation in the eye. And then the chopper can engage the haptic optic junction.
to rotate the lens. And here we want to line it up exactly at those marks. So we're again lining it up at those corneal marks. The dots of the lens should line up with the dots on the cornea. That looks fantastic. Time to seal up the main incision here. So I'll use the BSS on a cannula to seal the main incision back and forth, hydrating the roof of it. We don't want to cause too much distortion of the incision. Now, through the side port, get out this retained viscoelastic from the angle. You've seen our video of how we recommend this maneuver. And then finally, just nudge the lens into the perfect position before sealing up. Thank you for watching.